Hi, you're back. Um, I um, thought we'd go for a quick trip around the island. To see, Isle of Wight is a nice place to fly around. Um, when I'm flying back from the Isle of Wight, I always go around it. But seeing as we've got a bit of time uh, around it, you know, on the way back. But I thought what we do is we just do a quick um, tour. So I can um, show you what there is to see, such as there is. It's a nice place to visit if you've got a, a chance, Isle of Wight. We're on the um, ground, on the grass strip at uh, Isle of Wight, Sandow. If you look in the Poolies, which is the um, directory, or one of the directories of airfields in the UK, you'll find it under Isle of Wight, which is a bit confusing if you start looking under S for Sandow. But uh, it's 799 metres long, which is fine, more than enough for this plane. And uh, uh, it's unlicensed, which... Um, means that it, uh, the various things it doesn't have, probably like a fire brigade and stuff like that, and and I think that means that you can't do um, I think that means you can't do flying training from it um, you may have to go and touch down somewhere else and then do your training and then and then land back but anyway, it's a nice uh, airfield and uh, Pooley says it costs £10 to land, so which is next to nothing, isn't it really? Anyway, we're sitting on the runway we shouldn't really be sitting around on the runway, so the, um, the frequency, I don't think there's anybody on frequency, but I'll just show you. I haven't shown you how to set the comms frequencies. Um, you remember I said that there were two boxes, identical, identical, the comm and nav 1 and then comm and nav 2. Well, comm is obviously communications. And the way you set that, remember I said when you're setting nav, you press N, and then N, N, or N, and then N again to get the small digits. And then it was N2, wasn't it? And then we, we couldn't work out. N2. Anyway, if I press N, N. <laughs> if I press N, N2, N, N2, you get the small digits on the second box. I couldn't quite work that out the first time. Anyway, what well, we're, we're pressing the C, the com. So we press C, yes? And the frequency for Sandown, if I just look it up, is uh, 1. 119.275 or 119 decimal 275 as we say so 119 so pressing minus on the keyboard 119 and then press N again uh, no, C and then C again and then go down to 27 now you'll see it only says 27 and not 275 um, um, and that is correct it, that is decimal 275 they just don't show the fives they, they, there are no fives on the whole frequencies and there are no fives th in the third place on the half frequencies there are on the quarter frequencies but they're sort of just it's just, it's just assumed that that's 275 in the same as 119 decimal 125 would show us 119 decimal 12 so that when it says decimal 275 and you're looking at two and think where do I get the five from don't worry that is 275 and then we're going to um, press X to make that into the active frequency and um, as I expected there's absolutely nothing going on <laughs> so everyone's gone home um, or they're at lunch because it's it's lunch time here it's 12.04 so anyway off we go now um, we've got um, some flaps down and mixtures lean and we've done the run ups mags are on both um, hatches and harnesses everything's fine fuel is on all T's and P's look fine the, uh, let me just adjust the barometer, the uh, altimeter here, by putting the correct regional pressure setting in and then align the DI by pressing D. So I press B, B to reset the altimeter to the barometer pressure and then D to reset the DI. And we've got one stage of flaps down and so it's just hold it on the brakes a little bit. Check that everything's working, the engine sounds great, release the brakes and off we go. Now I said that there are three high security prisons on um, on the Isle of Wight, so perhaps we can see if we can find them. Bouncing a bit on the grass, aren't we? You always do. You always like to try and sort of keep the nose wheel, keep the weight off the nose wheel when you're taking off on grass. As you can see, there's some high ground in front of us. I don't mean that ridiculous lip, which is caused by the scenery. I mean. Uh, this uh, these hills over to the left of us here and if memory serves me correctly um, when you take off there's a sort of a cross as well 
some sort of druidic cross on the hill which has been erected to I'm sure was erected 2,000 years ago as a, an attempt to try and anticipate the invention of aircraft and cause them no end of trouble so we're about 300 feet above the airfield now um, so that's a sort of safe um, altitude to raise the flap so we'll press F6 to just take up the single stage of flaps and carry on climbing out at uh, 85 knots nice beaches aren't they sunny beaches it's a lovely place to visit the Isle of Wight I must say if you want to spend um, a week somewhere where, where it's got a pleasant climate lots of beaches and some absolutely lovely pubs very very children friendly the sort of places where you can um, you know providing you've got a designated driver drive there and and the whole family you can spend the sort of lunchtime the whole afternoon and the evening in in the nicer pubs because they've got so much for the children I'm not going to go up too high I'll sort of level off at about 1500 feet because some we're going to see oh, hello. things are dinging around me that's not in the plane I'm pleased to say it's always a good idea to um, turn off your mobile phone when you're in a plane there we are so we're at um, we're sort of pretty well at the altitude that we want so we're going to do attitude so I'm going to put the nose down a bit and then um, pull the throttle back to about 22.50 and level off there we go scenery is good isn't it it's worth that's the only add-on I've got is the VFR scenery and I must say it's I wouldn't I mean you know if you were flying jets and uh, all you wanted to do was fly IFR all day and ILS is in cloud then obviously you wouldn't need the VFR scenery but uh, I think for this this sort of th it looks pretty good doesn't it I think it's pretty good and this is not the most recent uh, scenery either I haven't got much of a horizon uh, you can't really see the difference between the sea and the cloud, uh, can you? Today, it's—I mean, you can, but uh, it's not—it's not brilliant. The height level, in case you're wondering, and we're over the sea, so um, the limit in the UK is 500 feet, and that's clear of any person, pier, um, person, vehicle, vessel, or structure. So, in fact, we could—if um, we wanted to—we could come down a bit lower. I thought we could come down to 500 feet, really. But you have to ask yourself, you know, would you want to have engine failure at 500 feet over the sea on the Isle of Wight? And the answer is you probably wouldn't, would you? I mean, if we got engine failure now, right, where would we go? And we'd probably aim for one of those fields over there, wouldn't we? Now, now we're at uh, 1,500 feet, and... I dare say we could probably glide into one of those now at this point we, we couldn't at 500 feet could we 500 feet would be in the drink would be in the briny uh, and as I say it's not so good if you're in a float plane it wouldn't make any difference would it but uh, not in this plane so we're underneath the Isle of Wight and heading west If you get west mixed up with east, then don't worry, so do I. It's not terminal. Doesn't mean you can't be a pilot. Just means you have to be a bit more careful. <laughs> Start at north and go ground clockwise. North, east, south, west, if you're in any, in any doubt. Over to the left there, that's a quite nice trip uh, down to Jersey or Guernsey. Um, and uh, that's that's a lovely trip in a, in a light aircraft and in fact this is the place you, you leave from if we were going direct to Jersey from our home base in Manston we could cut across and and not really come as far west as the Isle of Wight but in fact if you're flying a single engine airplane as I said before really you want to make sure that your your period over the water is as short as possible in terms of time um, and so um, the idea is really to fly down and over the 
um, St Catherine's Point, which is the bit we've just gone past, the, the, the southernmost tip of the Isle of Wight. And then, and then head down to Jersey, and then you're still over the sea for a while, by which I mean more than two minutes. <laughs> which is, I mean more than probably 20 minutes, but probably more than that. And, and it's very nerve-wracking. I mean, to be uh, up in the air in a single-engine plane over with, with nothing to see on any direction, no land in any direction, knowing that if you had an engine failure, you would definitely land in the sea, that is a bit nerve-wracking. See, I've got the water detail turned off, and I, I'm not. That's not a problem. I'm not really worried about the fact that that. But, you know, if you look really closely, you can see those waves are frozen. But I mean, it's not. Who looks that closely? I mean, come on. You know, you have to spend suspend your imagination, don't you? I remember. Well, the early versions of Flight Simulator, when well, you had 16 colours. Now you can imagine what they look like. And then even when we had 256 colours, or even 65,536 colours, when, when it got dark, it got dark in steps. It wasn't continuous like it is now, where you wouldn't know, you know, it gets dark and you just, like, like it does in real life. It used to literally <laughs> get snap, snap one minute it was light, and the next minute it was, it was like dusk, and the next minute it was dark. And you sort of looked at the screen and think, whoop, whoop, what happened there? Oh yeah, it's getting dark, it's getting dark got dark very suddenly big increments forgotten what I was talking about now anyway oh water effects yeah so you know I tell you flying along like this you wouldn't that this is the view you'd get if you were flying this is the view you'll get now uh, I haven't gone inland there because that's the bird sanctuary apparently that's what it says on the map not the, the uh, flight simulator map, but the map that the aviators use. Um, the one the one we use is called a half mil, and that's because it's a one to half million scale uh, map of the the um, all the control zones and danger areas and etc etc. So, oh, there's another bird sanctuary in land as well, so we better not. I think there's... I was hoping to try and show you some of the... Not that you'd be interested, really, but uh, some of the um, the high-security prisons. Because, being an island, um, it's a good idea to, as the uh, Americans know as well, from Alcatraz, always a good idea to put your prisoners on an island. Makes it more difficult, although... although um, I think when I went to see Alcatraz, I was surprised at how close it was to the mainland, having been brought up as a boy on stories of the fact that it was shark infested and many a criminal had tried to swim it and died in the attempt because it was too far, etc, etc, and uh, swept away by the powerful currents, blah, 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 and it's not, I mean, you know, you can shout to people on Alcatraz from the shore, <laughs> it's that close. So that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a shock and a myth, obviously perpetrated. The, the cliff here gets higher. Now one of the fun things um, we're flying down this part of the Isle of Wight, we're coming to a part called the Needles which is a bit where where there's a sort of uh, two chalk cliffs meet in a in a point, in a sort of a promontory. Oh, that's a good point, isn't it? Promontory, I don't know where I got that from. Um, anyway, they meet in a sort of a pointy bit and uh, as it gets towards the end they get um, higher and in fact I think the cliffs approaching they do approach 500 feet high so in fact if you descend down to 500 feet you can fly along at the same level as the people walking along the cliffs and that's always good you know they love it because this is a bird sanctuary this is where um, lots of birds um, gather before setting off over the overseas and where lots of birds land first of all so all these people who've come out for a quiet walk on the Sunday and there's nothing they like more than a ruddy great internal combustion engine powered unsilenced aircraft flying at 503 through all the bird um, all the bird populations you can see them waving on the shore at you in happiness. 
so that's what we're going to do we're going to go down to here this is the bit here we're going to go down to 500 feet but no no lower than that because um, they love taking down your number in fact it's quite difficult to get a registration number off a plane that's flying by even if it's flying by low because you're not expecting you're not you don't have your pad out doing your green biro but um, which is why when you do something like this you only do it once it doesn't matter how much fun it is never never go round in a circle come back and do it again because the next time they'll all have their pads out and their green biros and they'll all have you they'll have your reg they'll all have it and you see we're flying on a, a level with the um, with the land and there's a sort of a path there along the cliff can you see that people walk up and down there and you can sort of you can sort of fly along parallel and uh, wave at them and they shake their fist back as I say always bearing in mind that um, if you were to have an engine failure you would I mean you might be able to dob in that gap but you would have fa you would have trouble landing wouldn't you thing about you know especially flying to Jersey they there's a saying that um, uh, about uh, life jackets that bodies are found in life jackets and survivors are found in life rafts and I'm sure that's true because you wear one of these disposable one well, of not disposable but I mean that you wear one of these um, life jackets that is single use that's what I'm trying to say and then it blows up when you pull a pull it yank the toggle and uh, hello <sighs> but if you crash the plane and don't turn it over and you're lucky enough to get out then and and you inflate your life jacket then you're still going to be bobbing around aren't you in the Atlantic it's not exactly conducive to uh, a long and healthy life Whereas if you had a life raft, you'd be able to get out of the water and you'd stop yourself getting hypothermia. We didn't invest in a radio beacon. You can get radio beacons that um, transmit on 121.5, which is the international emergency. This is the needles. International um, emergency frequency, 121.5. And you activate this beacon, or if it goes in salt water, it activates itself. And it floats. Well, I hope it floats. You know, it's looking for it at the bottom of the ocean. Um, yeah, so and it, and it floats and um, and transmits a sort of a SOS. And uh, the emergency services can triangulate the. That's the needles. It's a lighthouse down there somewhere. Well, I would say down there. Obviously, that would be a bit dumb putting it down there when it's on the top of the. Um, top of the land if I remember correctly. Anyway, the old the old VFR scenery is not that not so brilliant that you can see that, but you can't expect to see everything, can you? I mean, one day we will. One day everything will be there. It's a bit misty. Wee Someone's running over the other side, don't they? Saw me go down the other side and they've run over this side to get my number. They've got their green biro out. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to get away. Right, we're coming up to cows. Cows on the right. That's the town of cows, not some cows. That's where they hold uh, uh, lots and lots of sailing done in this part of the estuary the Solent I flew down here once and <clears throat> the Queen was moored just off uh, off of cows in the Britannia well, the, the yacht well, I say yacht, it's a bloody ocean going liner but we call it a yacht and uh, her, her um, 
Her subjects love her so much. She felt it necessary to bring a destroyer with her. So the Britannia was moored alongside a destroyer, Royal Navy destroyer, and on this destroyer had um, four guns. And uh, I flew. They, they they'd established some temporary restricted airspace over the top of the um, the Britannia, as they always do. So you're not allowed to fly right over the top, but I mean, you know, you can fly past it. The visibility is very good. And of course, I was looking down. I was looking at the Britannia from the top and uh, this destroyer, and I noticed that the destroyer's anti-aircraft guns were all trained on me. And as I flew past, <laughs> they all swivelled round. <laughs> and that was like <laughs> a bit hard to describe the feeling of having like eight anti-aircraft guns trained on your plane. I must say, it's not a pleasant feeling. I thought, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I mean, seriously, you know, in a single-engine plane. Drop a pound of flour on her? What? What am I going to do? But uh, I I suspect they were just doing it for practice. They were just doing it for... Stop themselves getting bored and uh, to wind me up a bit. But they were also probably... Uh, probably doing it with the intention of warning me that if I did... <laughs> If I was there for any funny business, that uh, I wasn't going to last very long. So that's what we were talking about, not lasting very long in um, life jackets and life rafts. When in a plane like this, you know, it's, it, it, it's a bit difficult to carry a life raft as such. You can, you can um, carry life rafts in planes like this. But I think it would take up most of the back seat there. Because you'd want to be able to grab hold of it and pull it out with you, wouldn't you, when you came out of the plane. Might as well climb up a bit, seeing as we're... Again, we're over sea. Don't tell me I've been doing all this with the flaps down. Did I put the flaps up? Hang on a second. There's only one way to find out. Let me put no, I did put them up, didn't I? Yeah. Now, when I say I'm going to climb up a bit, <laughs> he says, descending a bit, what I mean is I'm just going to very, very gently just climb. And you can do that. It will have an impact on your airspeed, of course, because you're trading forward speed for vertical height. But um, you can do that without too much um, trouble. If I wanted to do, let's say I wanted to do um, a, a, a structured climb, say I wanted to climb to 2,000 feet in a structured way, what I would do is... Um, um, is the old um, is is put them um, climb power in, which is basically full power on something like on a plane like this, and then uh, adopt the attitude that gives me a 85 knot climb. So we're looking we're looking here for the power, and then we're looking here for the uh, climb. And I'm a little bit slow. You lower the nose, and a little bit higher. You you um, a little bit faster. You um, raise the nose and then you get you can see I'm about 10 degrees each one of these lines is five degrees so it's five I'm mean about about 10 degrees and this is very precise you can if I zoom in here all right this this ball here you you'd be amazed at how precise it is you can literally to you know to within fractions of a millimeter fly this ball on this line and you'll find that all your speeds will stay spot on or your your climbing, um, the rate, your, your climbing rates will stay spot on, etc. So um, that's, and it's designed to be like that because you know it's designed for when you're in cloud, and you need to fly the plane very precisely. So we're at about two and a half thousand feet now, so we can do our um, attitude power trim. It's power attitude trim going up. Remember, an attitude power trim going down. So attitude. 
Now here we're looking to level off, and this is the uppy downy meter. So we uh, we're going to adjust our attitude until we've got zero on there, and then we we try and fly at that attitude. And then because as we level off, the speed's going to go up. We're going to cut to cruising power, and that should leave you pretty well leveled off at whatever uh, altitude you're, you're aiming for. Let's just do a quick B and a quick D to uh, reset the compass and everything. Now we'll do another. We'll do a Frida check as well. So fuel. I want to cut the engine. Don't really need to lean the mixture at this rate. So fuel and then the radio didn't work because we made a right mess of the VORs, didn't we? Coming over, I um, didn't even use the Goodwood VOR. I ended up flying away from the Mayfield VOR, thinking I was flying towards the Goodfoot Goodwood VOR. No wonder we never found Goodwood. I'll have to find it on the way back. Never mind. Second rule. Second rule. Fuel. We're down to about a third of a tank. Someone's obviously used the plane. Um, temperatures and pressures are fine, vacuum is fine, just the um, charging is fine, the odds the alternator charging the battery, fuel flows in the green, the exhaust uh, gas temperature is fine, a little bit low but no problem. So, everything's within parameters. Press that button. It's not going to do anything, because we're not using the autopilot. That's the main uh, river going into the Isle of Wight, as we all know rivers go in, in aviation, they only come out in geography. Yeah, so if you're flying to Jersey you can't really take a life raft, so you, you know, you're taking a risk. Fortunately it's a pretty low one. Guy who um, used to share the plane with me, Andy, he always said, look, he says, first of all, I don't know what you're worried about. He says, there's no need to worry more over water than there is over land. He says, the plane's just as likely to fail over whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't know whether it's over water or land. So really, there's no point worrying more. You should be worrying, well, obviously you worry because there's nowhere to land. You know that. But the plane doesn't know that. So it's not, it's not going to wait until you're over water and then fail. It you know, could fail at any time. And then the other thing that you have to remember is that given that to get to Jersey you'll be flying for about three hours anyway um, if anything is going to go wrong it's probably going to go wrong in the first like, two minutes very rare unless you're really abusing the engine that um, we're going to descend now so we cut the power mm -hmm. And just uh, put ourselves in a gentle descent. Hmm. Actually, we're probably a little way away. We're heading. I think we're going to cut off the um, eastern corner. So I'm going to carry on for a bit. Let's just let's get this throttle set correctly. 2,000 feet will be fine. I thought that was the um, the um, eastern uh, corner of the Isle of Wight, but it's not. It's, we're, we're still over the top of the Isle of Wight. It's bigger than you think, actually. There's a light here, which I think is Benbridge, which would be about right, because we we need to fly down here, and then this will be the eastern corner, and then we fly down. Remember how we arrived over Benbridge and then to Sandown, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut across the top and turn right, because the visibility doesn't look that brilliant, does it? See if I can see anyone on the beaches. Hmm. Yeah, so you have to fly with a life jacket. I mean, you can... It's just, rafts cost hundreds of pounds. I mean, probably if you, you were to fly to Jersey 
and take a life raft, if you decided to buy one, the life raft would cost more than the trip. And the trouble with these things is they have time, they have a sell by date, you know, they have like a best before date because of all the pressurised canisters and aviation being absolutely mad about safety. I mean, which is good, you know. But when when you've got a, something that's battery powered, like an emergency locator beacon, and there are ways of testing that you press buttons on them and they flash to just let you know the battery's okay. And it might say, well, you know, this battery needs replacing after 18 months. And you find that to replace the battery, and this is like a battery that would cost about a pound, is 160 pounds just because it's an aviation related battery. And, th and then 10 years later, after you've stopped using it because it's, it's so far out of date that you're not using it anymore, 10 years later you're still pressing the button and the original battery is still working. And you're thinking, hello, someone's, someone's being had here. Now, I think that's there. Actually, I think we're Sandan is here, isn't it? I think it's here. There we go. So what I'm going to do, I think I'll have to find out what direction the circuit is. And hang on a second. Da 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 da. Public crossing, fixed wing. thing about flying single-handed is you have to do everything and fly. Yeah, circuit's right hand on runway 23. I thought so. It's because, um... Now, now, I'll explain what I'm doing in a second. What I've done is I've lost sight of the runway. So I'm just going to get find it again. There it is. Okay. Right, now, now we're in big trouble. Now we're in big trouble. Because we're flying a left-handed circuit. So I'm just going to get the hell out of Dodge for a second. Actually, we're not in big trouble because we're not so close to the runway. Can you, can you see the runway here? We're not so close to it that we're in conflict. But we were nearly, if we carried on drifting over towards the airfield, there would have been in conflict with the, the circuit. Now, a right-handed circuit means all turns right-handed, yes? So basically, we're flying the wrong way for downwind. If it was a left-handed circuit, we'd be flying the right way for downwind. But it's a right-handed circuit. So what I'm going to do is join downwind by turning left and left again. And then the runway will be on our right, which is where it should be. Let's just... Uh Let's turn left then. So, remember that trick? Because it's runway 23, we're going to put 23 underneath this little marker here. And then we know that we're flying a right handed circuit. Uh, or, or, no, not a right handed circuit, a circuit with uh, right angles. A right angles to the runway is what I'm trying to say. Now we're flying at right angles to the runway. Now, when we're looking for traffic that may have taken off, and may have turned right on the circuit and be flying towards us here. So we don't want to get too close. And we're also looking for traffic that might be joining downwind from the right. So I can't see any. I'm not, I'm not going to get too close. So I'm just going to carry on. I'm going to turn and descend. And I'm looking for about a thousand feet with two, three under this marker here. So that's the two, three under that marker and we're coming down to about a thousand feet and there's the runway on our right so we can call downwind to land 23 at Sandown sorry Isle of Wight International at this point now now how far do we want to fly away from it well the answer is probably always a bit further than you think I'm going to just pull up slightly because I want to trade some speed for height and we're going to drop the first stage of laps 
and make my turn onto base. And turn onto base involves the 2 3 marker coming under the this 3 o'clock marker here. There we are, there it is there. So because we're a bit high, I've cut the throttle, I'm just going to do a gentle turn. We're going to, because we're high, I want to increase the drag, so I'll drop the second load of flaps and stretch the turn out a bit by making the circle a bit more shallow. There we go, I reckon we're fine. Bearing in mind that we um, Check, yeah, two, three. Do a quick bum fix check so it breaks her off, undercarriage is down a lot. Mixtures rich, fuels on, sufficient for a go around, hatches and harnesses tight. We're coming, we're going to come in fairly steep anyway. We're always coming steep, don't we? And it's runway two, three marking, so that's good because that's what we, um, we're expecting. And there we are, nice grass strip. Just hold it off. Lovely. Decided it wanted to land. Didn't know I was going to hold that off a little bit more, but uh, hello. What's that over there? We built a facility. It's F5. Get the flaps up. And uh, Anyway, um, the plane needs to go in for a service, I think I mentioned that, and that is uh, in Thurrock, which is uh, again another grass strip just north of the Thames in Essex. And so tomorrow we're going to have to go from here to Essex. So what we'll do, we'll do a little bit of flight planning there, because I think we're going to have to find our way round Gatwick, and possibly round Heathrow, but certainly round Gatwick. So um, I'll shut things down. Um, while you go and um, pay the landing fee and um, I will if I don't see you before I'll see you tomorrow for the flight to Tharak. alright cheerio